As a scenic artist, you often have to mix paint to match a design or make more of a mystery color. So this video will cover the process I use when mixing and matching colors. When you are asked to mix a color, usually it will be from a designer rendering, a paint swatch, a color from your shop that you need more of, or a color from a paint kit, meaning a different shop with different paints in stock made it. If it is from a kit and it doesn't say how it was made, try to get in contact with the original shop. In the case that you are working from a designer's rendering, you'll want to have a physical rendering rather than a digital one. Ideally, the designer will have printed or painted the rendering for you so that you are certain that the colors are correct, but if you are sent digital files, print them. Each screen looks slightly different and the luminosity of screens can make it harder to tell if you correct mixed the color. The trick is to have a good printer that prints color accurately. Ideally, the designer would be able to come by and verify that it looks correct, but at the very least you will have a reference that is not going to change depending on your screens. And as a side note, if the design is complicated with many colors, punch or cut a hole in the middle of a note card to help you isolate colors. When working with a paint that you or someone else made, you will first want to make a swatch and dry it. This way you will always have a record of what the paint was if something happens to it. However, it is very important that you don't mix into the existing color. Even though you have made a swatch, you definitely want to preserve some of the original wet paint. Now, no matter what you are mixing from, you can generally use the same process. And to show you the process that I usually go through when I match a color, I'm going to demonstrate how to mix a mystery color. This is a mixed color I got from a friend. I have no idea what she used to make it. All I know is that it was mixed in a shop that is well stocked in Roscoe off-Broadway paints. I don't have all of the off-Broadway colors, but this puts me in a situation much like when you receive a paint kit. It was made in a different shop with a different stock of paint than your own, and you somehow have to make it work. So what I do first after making a swatch is determine the base color. From the base color, think through what needs to change in the hue, value, and saturation. This color looked pretty similar to deep red because of its bias towards purple, so that is my base color. But deep red is too vibrant, so I thought raw umber would be a good color to tone it down because of how green it is. However, because I am not sure how this color was made, I started small. I mixed a small amount on a lid to see if I was even on the right track. Once I feel that my color choices are fairly accurate, I can start mixing more, but still on a small scale, because larger quantities can reveal differences in color that I didn't notice on the lid. When I started to mix more of it, I thought it needed to lean more towards orange so I added golden yellow. As I am trying to hone in on my color, I like to compare them wet on wet by dipping my fingers in each and comparing them side by side. By doing this, I could see that my color was too dark and strayed too far from red. After adding a bit of white, I felt it was time to do a dry swatch to compare the colors and better see what was off. I determined it had become too orange and that perhaps the yellow was a mistake. So to try to compensate for it and make it lean more towards purple again, I added ultramarine blue. At this point, I am not happy with the number of colors I have had to use. While these five colors have gotten me close, I want to get to the color in the most direct way possible. Too many colors makes it very hard to mix more, and I can see that my mixture is more muddy than the original. At this point, I would start over, and because I have only mixed a small amount, it isn't a huge loss. Because I don't actually need this color, I didn't try again, but if I did, I would have started with deep red, raw umber, and white, because I think I could see that the value needed to be lighter and mistakenly chose yellow to do that. From that three color mixture, I would compare it to the original to see if it did need more of a change in hue, and if so, I would probably replace the raw umber with a color that would get the hue and saturation to the right spot in one color rather than two. Now this is a color that I had already worked out the recipe for and kept track of the ratios by spoonfuls. If you want to be more accurate, use measuring spoons and cups. I needed large quantities of this color, and even though I knew the ratios, I started carefully. The rule of thumb is to add darker colors into the lighter colors, and I purposefully added less of the colors than I needed so that I would not overshoot my color and need to add more white. It takes a lot of white to correct a color that has gotten too dark. But at this scale, I went through the same process of checking my colors wet on wet and doing dry swatches until I got it right. My last bits of advice are, one, when making a swatch, put it on the edge of your note card so that you can more easily put it next to your reference. It is hard to see subtle differences if your swatch is in the middle of the paper. You can obviously fold the paper if you need to, but the point is there shouldn't be a space between your mixture and reference. 
And two, have good lighting and neutral colors in your mixing space. The color of your lights can really change how colors look and will make mixing harder. And without neutral colors, your eyes can get fatigued and make it harder to see colors accurately. Three, keep in mind the way sealers change the way your colors look, whether they are mixed into the paint or layered on top. And four, I like to use brushes or rubber spatulas to mix paint rather than spoons. I find that the mix is more consistent because brushes and spatulas get to the bottom and sides better. That's it for now. If you have your own tips or process for mixing color, leave a comment.